Let me pause for a few moments and look at that first reading from the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis was shaped somewhere about six or 700 years before Christ. Its setting is earlier, but that's when most scholars believe it was shaped, six or 700 years before Christ. And it's full of stories. Stories are very important. We all have stories. Uh, our parents taught us, our grandparents taught us stories. I've never met a millionaire yet who didn't tell me he was delivering newspapers when he was a little boy. I mean, somehow we have these extraordinary stories of transformation and success. We also have many stories of tragedy, but stories are very important because stories tend to tell us who we are and from whence we have come. We all have stories. Some of them are old stories and some are recent. We tend to share stories. When we have a conversation one with another, say, well, let me tell you what happened to me. Well, I will tell you something more powerful, some worse story or better story. So we're full of stories. That's why the gospel and God is revealed through stories. And today's first reading is the story of Joseph the Patriarch. Uh, it was popularized in, you know, the amazing Technicolor coat. Remember Joseph and the amazing Technicolor coat? Um, Joseph is the 11th son of Jacob. He had 12 sons. Benjamin is the youngest, but he's the 11th son. Um, Jacob, of four different women in Jacob's life. Two were his wives, and the other two were concubines at the time. That was normal practice. So he had these 12 sons. But uh, Joseph was his favorite son, and so he gave him this technicolor coat, as the popular musical says. And, uh, but the other brothers were jealous of him, and because of their jealousy, Eventually, they sold him into slavery down in Egypt, but he was a dreamer. Now, this will be important a couple of weeks from now when we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph. He was a dreamer, and he was able to interpret the dreams of the Pharaoh. And therefore, from tragedy, miracle happens. That's a story. And uh, he becomes the most powerful person after the Pharaoh in Egypt. And eventually he will be reconciled with his brothers and uh, the people will move from Canaan to Egypt and in due time Moses will lead the people out of Egypt. The thing about Joseph that's worth remembering is he's a very honorable man. He doesn't hold grudges, he forgives his brothers. They will come to him in a time of need when there's a famine in the land of Canaan, and they'll come looking for provisions and looking for supplies, they'll come to Egypt, and he is in charge. But he doesn't hold grudges, and uh, he forgives generously. He wants to be reconciled with his family. The one who rejected him, he wants to be reconciled with that same family. So he's a good teacher for us. He teaches us not to hold grudges, to let things go, to overlook human failings. That's what makes him the patriarch ideal. Uh, he's a powerful man with a humble spirit. He's a rich man who is exceedingly generous. He's a man of great character. So he teaches us about the soul, about the soul of a person, something deep inside of us, to treat people with respect, to understand people's failings, to forgive, to be reconciled, to hold a family together. That's the whole teaching of Joseph. And he becomes the patriarch. You know, the 12 sons of Jacob give us the 12 tribes of Israel, which is 
the 12 apostles. The new Israel will have 12. 12 becomes the number, and it goes back here to the book of Genesis to Jacob and his 12 sons. So keep this in mind. I will make many sacrifices for Lent, and we'll give up things for Lent. But there's something deeper and more profound in the summons of the Holy Spirit during the season of Lent. It has to do with the way we see people, the way we perceive people, the way we respond to people, especially people from whom we are divided in some way. This is the teaching of the Word of God when we reflect on the patriarch Joseph. I think that's all you need to hear about Joseph this time of the morning. But uh, let the Spirit lead you through this day, just, just today, not the whole of Lent now, but just today. Surrender to the Spirit today and listen, sin, reach out, put up the antennas and listen to how God speaks to us just today. Pause with me now for a moment of prayer.